Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. In this video, we're going to look at how to share documents. To share a document, the first thing you need to do is find it. And here I am in OneDrive and I can see a list of documents and folders. To share a file, you're going to just select it and you'll notice that at the top of the window, you'll see a share and a copy link in the ribbon. So these are the two buttons you'd use to share the file. And I'm going to talk you through the differences. When you share a file, you're building a link to send to somebody that gives them the permission and access to open the file. And a good way to demonstrate how this happens is by using the copy link button. When I press copy link, you'll see that it's actually created a link for me and I can press the copy button and then I can paste that link into an email, a message, whatever I want to use it with. So if we copy the link and go to OneNote and just paste it in, you can see it's a URL, so it's clickable and it has some reference to the location of the document and then it has a series of random characters so it doesn't make much sense in English. But this is the link that gives the person who receives it the permissions to open the file. It's not just a link to the file. I can change the nature of that link by using this section here. So when I go to the link settings, you see I've got these four options here. Anyone, people in Contoso, people with existing access and specific people. Now just to call out here that Contoso is the name of my tenant in Office 365. So you'll see the name of your own tenant there. Right, so let's go through these one by one and I'll explain what they all mean. First of all, anyone. Anyone is a very open setting. It basically means that anyone can anonymously edit or access the file that you're sharing. That means that people don't even need to log in. If they have that link, they can click on it and the document will open. Now, when I select anyone, you'll see down here we've got some other settings and I can allow editing or not by unchecking the box. And I can also set an expiration date. So this is something that's uh, unique to anonymous links or anyone links because it allows you to restrict when and for how long that link can be used. So if I say I'm going to restrict this until Thursday, it's going to expire on Thursday. From that point on, the link will no longer be usable. When I'm happy with these settings, I can hit apply and now I have a new link. And if I copy that one, go to OneNote, you'll see it's slightly different. Yeah, not in a recognizable way in English, but the link is different because it has different settings in it. Okay, so let's go through the other options. So if I click on the link settings button, and now people in Contoso, you'll see that the expiration button has gone, but I can allow editing. So what does this mean? People in Contoso is basically anyone in my organization. So anyone who has an Office 365 login, who is part of my organization can use this link. And if I check the box to allow editing, they can also allow editing. And I click apply. Now I can copy that link and that link will also be different. Let's go to the next option. People with existing access. What this means now is that only people who already have access to this file, they already have permissions, but now I'm sending them a link to the file. And the last one is specific people. Now this is sharing the file with new people, someone who, who perhaps hasn't seen it before. I could type in here, Alex Wilbur, and then apply. And now that is a link that allows Alex to access that file. So you can see the difference between the four options now. Now one thing to notice is that when your file has been shared, you will see that it's been shared in the sharing column of the library. You'll notice that some of these files are private, some of them are shared. Private meaning they haven't been shared. When you click on the shared button, you're going to notice that at the top of the manage access window on the right hand side now, you can see you have a stop sharing button. So I can stop sharing that file if I want to. But I also have all these links within them. These are the links that I just created when I was pressing apply in the previous settings window. Anyone with this link can edit the item. Anyone with this link can view it until Thursday. Anyone in Contoso can edit it. So you see, I've built up a number of different links that I can reuse if I want to. So say I want to give people anonymous access, I can grab this link, copy, paste it into an email and send it as a message and so on. And then you can also see other people, like for example, I gave 
Alex Wilber down here, specific permissions. He was one of the specific people I called out uh, and he has edit access. But if I want, I can remove these anonymous links if I want to, so they can no longer be used and manage the permissions in that way as well. So lastly, let's see how that looks on the share button. So if I go to share at the top here, you can see again, I've got my four options. If I choose the settings button, I've got anyone, people in Contoso, people with existing access and specific people. So this works all in exactly the same way. And once I've applied and created the, the link that I want to send, I can then add in the people that I want to send it to. So I can add in as many as I like. I can even add in people from outside my organization. And you can see it highlights the fact that this email address is outside of my organization. I can then add a message and then I can send and I can also copy the link or use it with Outlook. So if I hit send, that's going to send an email to those three recipients with the link in the email that allows them to access my document. So in this video, we looked at how to share documents.